Good morning, everyone. We are live this morning in Ironwood at the Stormy Cromer factory. We're going to be taking a behind the scenes tour, taking a look at just how a Cromer is made and also looking at some of the other products that come out of this facility. I'm really excited to be here. Obviously, we all know the Cromer, but I've never seen up close how they're made and already Real cool. Oh, yeah. We're here in Ironwood, <laughs> and I'm going to be fighting the urge to bring out my Uber accent uh, well, all day long. You're because I feel it. like when I'm talking about a Stormy Cromer, I always want to say a Stormy Cromer, eh? Yeah. And that's just, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it, do you it, have a essence, Stormy Cromer? I don't have a Stormy Cromer. Okay, I am do I. not a true Uber in Ooh. that sense. So we are getting indoctrinated into the Upper we Peninsula are. lifestyle and culture with our very first Stormy Cromers today. But you know what? It is Monday, September 30th, the last day of September. <gasps> Ah, it's beautiful outside. It is. It is it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Day. And I spent my weekend paddleboarding yet again. So it just seems like an endless summer vacation. It is never <laughs> ending. But tomorrow, looking at the forecast, it's going to be a little bit more fall like then. So these stormy Cromer caps, the vest, all the winter gear, it's uh, going to be needed. It's, it's going time. to come in handy. It's Pull them out. That season. That's right. Yep. Pull them out. Dust them off because you're going to want them on your head soon. And as we are driving, we're going to walk over here and uh, get started. But as we were driving this morning, you guys, the colors were so beautiful. I felt like the closer we got to Ironwood, the uh -huh. brighter and more vibrant they were. And it was just such a beautiful, quiet, peaceful drive. And um, I didn't mind it one bit. I didn't either. I, a nice sunrise, too. So Yeah, a couple of hours on the road. And here we are. And here we are. We've got good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've got Bob Jacob heart with us and the CEO Gina Thorson. Thanks a lot for having us here in your factory. Obviously there's a lot of history with Stormy Cromer and a lot of um, significance of being here in Ironwood. So I guess let's take it back to the beginning <laughs> before we talk about what's happening here today and taking a look at the production process. For the folks that don't know, when did, when did Stormy Cromer get started? How long have you been in business? Well, it's, it's really good that you're asking because I really was surprised last week. Uh, I was in the suit speaking about Stormy Cromer mm -hmm. and hardly anybody in the audience knew that Stormy Cromer actually was a person and everything like that. So getting the history out is kind of cool. Yeah. So, so Stormy Cromer was really a person. His, his name was really George, but George Cromer. Mm -hmm. But we found out later that his nickname came from a very difficult personality. Oh, a stormy nice. personality, stormy not, not a winter hat maker, but a st man with a stormy personality. And, um, and so he uh, created this hat with the ear flaps and started the business and owned it from 1903 to 1964, sold it to a guy from Milwaukee who owned it from 1964 to 2001. And then we had the opportunity to pick it up. So our family, Gina, mm -hmm. Gina is my daughter. Our family has, is the, you know, just has the privilege of being the third owner of this wonderful hat brand. And this has become an icon for people in the Upper Peninsula. It's These hats are worn across the country, but if you're from the UP, you almost have to have a Stormy Cromer. Uh, we were just saying it's time to dust them off. The weather's going to be changing. It's time to get the ear flaps down, but uh, it really is just a part of who we are up here. Absolutely. I mean, it, it really, it's funny because it did start in Wisconsin, but the UP and really the whole state of Michigan has really embraced it. And I think it is a sign of like how we endure these winters, right? And how we get through it. And we have the gear, we have the stuff, nothing will phase us. Um, and the fact that it is cut and sewn right here in the UP also is a, is a huge part of that. Yeah. What uh, about Stormy Cromer, what has changed in, in that time? I mean, in, in over generations of families owning it and what has remained the same over all of those years well the hat has definitely stayed the same exactly exactly the same it's the same hat from 1903 it's yeah we've got Woo. some that they're slightly different but for the most part they're exactly the That's same awesome. the, the hat we call the original is the same when i when we bought this company in in 2001 the cromer cap company made two hats a black hat and a red hat so everything that you see in colors and vests like Gina's wearing and any colored hat or any lady's hat or any hat with a flower was all kind of a result of us brainstorming. How can we keep this project going? And I want to tell you, there's no way this hat business would be as famous as it is if it wasn't for 
the Upper Peninsula supporting us and the mm. whole state of Michigan, actually. But it's been really, really cool to have that. I mean, a Stormy Cromer cap has become the unofficial uniform of the Upers for, <laughs> for many, many years now. So I think it's only fitting that Upper Michigan today is here for the first time to see how it's all made. That's right. And we're going to be, as we said, taking a look at how the Cromer is made. We're going to take our first break. And when we come back, we're going to start at the beginning of the assembly line, the big cut. And I'm really right excited. Right over there. Ooh, yep. they're looking we're like getting it ready. Big cut. And we're going to take it all the way to the end to show you exactly how these are made. We'll be right back, you guys.